Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You may be seated. Praise God. God is good all the time. It is a joy uh, to be rejoined with everybody here today. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? You still here? Amen. On behalf of my wife and I, uh, we want to thank you for your prayers and your love and your support, uh, allowing us to go on sabbatical right before we celebrate our church's 10-year anniversary. Come on, somebody. We are super, super grateful to be a part of a church uh, that just shows so much appreciation uh, and love. And we are back, and we are excited about the next season of ministry uh, at Chapel of Change. Anybody excited about what God is going to do? <laughs> Praise God. I. Before I get into the word uh, this afternoon, I want to just share a couple uh, things uh, that are pretty exciting that we want to uh, pray over. And this is my uh, basically my first Sunday back, so I'm going to take a little bit longer uh, than normal. Can I take my time today? Take my time. Uh, first, I want to just thank all those that led our discipleship groups and were part of the discipleship groups. We had approximately 400 people in discipleship groups a week for the last eight weeks. Come on, somebody. We had about 50 discipleship groups every week, which is major, uh, and we thank God for that. So the Lord is moving. I mean, it is it is special to see the Lord move in the church while you're not there. And that's how you know God is moving. When people are growing and getting saved and new people are coming and you're not even there. I'm like, I'm grateful so for some of our, uh, all of our old friends, right, that have been around for a decade. I'm grateful for uh, our new friends and I'm grateful for our soon-to-be friends. I'm meeting new people in the last couple of days that have just joined our church in the last three months. And it's just a joy. I met a brother at our Carson campus this morning, and he said, Brian, uh, I didn't know you're that tall. Because all I've seen you is on videos from like here up. And he, is playing, I, he was playing the drums at our Carson campus, serving the Lord. I met a sister at our uh, picnic. Anybody went to the picnic yesterday? Wow. It was a fun time in the Lord. I got to hang out with our death family and uh, a lot of people here. And towards the end of the day, there was several sisters that were talking at the end of the park. And I went over there and started talking to them. And as I was about to leave... I overheard uh, one of the sisters that I did not know tell one of the other sisters, hey, are you going to introduce me to my new pastor? And uh, I met Sister Gloria, who's been a part of our church for one month and three days right now. And this was the first Sunday she was supposed to be, she was serving this first time this Sunday. So uh, I've, I've met several people that have just been a part of our church for the last three months, and I look forward uh, to building a relationship with you and serving the Lord with you for eternity. Come on, somebody. Eternity, right? We are so grateful uh, for that. And so uh, we're excited. We're excited. I'm going to be, as you know, we have midweek worship here on Thursday nights, uh, here at our Paramount campus. I really want to encourage uh, you guys to start attending. Uh, we need a midweek dose of the Holy Ghost. And um, so I'll be teaching this. I think I'm teaching this Thursday. I'm not 100% sure. But this September, I'm going to be starting a new series on Thursday nights 
uh, through the book of Psalms. It's going to be like about, I think it's going to be about a six-week series. I'm going to give you an introduction to the book of Psalms. But even more so, the book of Psalms is a healing book. It heals our souls and our minds. And so that's going to start the first Thursday of September. I want you to write it down on your calendar. I want you to join me. Uh, but you don't have to wait. You can come on Thursdays already because we had a powerful time last uh, Thursday night in the Lord. Amen. Anybody who was here last Thursday night? We had a powerful time in the Lord. Also, our deaf discipleship is on Thursday nights in the fellowship hall. So I really want to encourage us to invite other uh, deaf family members and friends to join us. The Lord is moving in a mighty way in our deaf community. Go like this to, to signal your acceptance and praise the Lord of that. So we've got some exciting things happening. I also uh, want us to pray about our 10-year anniversary that is happening in October. We're going to have a Fresh Hope Revival uh, in October, and we're doing something different this year. We're going to go coast to coast. God willing, we're going to have a revival night on each one of our campuses, uh, Long Beach, Carson, here uh, in Paramount. It's going to be on a Friday night and then on a Saturday night on Whittier. On that Friday night in Paramount, we are inviting one of the most influential preachers in the world. His name is Reverend Samuel uh, Rodriguez, and he's a powerful revival preacher. And he's going to be joining us for the night in Paramount, where we're, we're going to have under the tent. So keep that in prayer, because we're going into this next 10 years with a bang. Someone say bang. We're going into the next 10 years with a bang. Also, I want to let you in on this prayer request. Now, what I'm about to share right now is not 100% sure because it's a process that needs to take place, but I can't hold it in any longer. I got to tell y'all. And even if it doesn't happen, we're going to pray for to the Lord for something better, right? So that's kind of what you do in your life. You pray for things, you work hard for things, you pray for things. And if it doesn't happen, then you just believe for something better and bigger, did you catch that? That's a basic principle of faith. Well, you, you do that. So I want to let you in on this journey. It, it's not 100% sure, but I, I need you to be along with me in this journey. But I'm believing it's going to happen. So one of the gracious families of our church um, is going to be buying a home for the church so that we could turn it into a men's transformational home home. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Um, we're going to call it a Kingsman home, our Kingsman home. And our vision is going to be to transform males into kingdom men. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all sisters should have said amen to that. We want to transform ma males into kingdom men because everybody's born a male, but not everybody born a man right? You become a kingdom man. And so this gracious family is going to purchase the home, kind of renovate it, and they're going to give us like a year to purchase it from them at cost, meaning they're not going to make a profit of it. They're going to give us a year to raise funds for it. We're still going to use it within that year and kind of build it up and stuff like that. But man, this is something exciting because we want to develop uh, church planners, we want to develop pastors, we want to develop kingdom men. Come on, somebody. So you're going to be hearing more about this, uh, but keep it in your prayer. And eventually, we're going to be asking the whole church to partner with us in this kingdom project. You're going to help out somehow, uh, some way. So would you keep that in prayer? Would you keep that in prayer? I'm believing that it's going to be done. So Let's turn in our Bibles to Psalms 111, Psalms 111, verses 1 through 6. Psalms 111, verses 1 through 6. I believe I have a word from the Lord for somebody. Anybody ready for the Word of God? Anybody hungry for the Word of God? Remember, the Lord will feed you to the level of your appetite. 
The Lord will feed you to the level of your appetite. Always come to the house of the Lord hungry. Psalms 111, verses 1 through 6. Ready or not, here we go. Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation, the works of the Lord are great, studied by all who pl have pleasure in them. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He has given food to those who fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has declared to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this afternoon, and we gather around your word to eat. We pray that you feed us, Lord, feed us faith, feed us wisdom, feed us strength. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everyone says, amen and amen. You know, in the course of my life, I have met a lot of picky people. A lot of picky people. And I don't mean that in a negative sense, right? It's just some people are picky. They're very selective to what they receive. Is there, is there any picky people in the house today? You don't, you don't have to raise your hand, but is any, any picky people in the house today? Picky, picky people are a different type of people. Picky people are like a different breed of people. They, they, they don't just go to any store. Right? They don't just buy groceries from any grocery store. Like my dad, he loves Trader Joe's, right? Like he's probably not going to go to Alpha Beta. Alpha Beta still exists? Okay, that's another one. Y'all going to wake up. Y'all going to wake up over here. And you know, some people are picky. They, they aren't going to go to pay less, right, to get high heels. They're just not going to go to pay less. It's just, they're just selective in what they do. Some people are picky about the food they eat. Some people are picky about the clothes they wear. Some people are clo uh, picky about the stores they uh, buy from. Some, some people are picky about the food they eat. Anybody picky over food? Like, I don't want to tell on nobody, but Irene. <laughs> and and she's not the only one. She's not the only one. Um, Pastor Terry, that brother is picky over the food he eats. I've been to restaurants with him across the United States, and we've been to dozens of restaurants. And I would say at least nine out of ten restaurants, he'll, he, he'll eat half the food and turn the rest back saying it ain't good. I don't know if that's picky or another level. That's another level of pickiness right there. And then he'll try to take the rest home to a microwave, put it in the fr refrigerator. I was thinking about this, about picky, and I don't know if you realize it or not, but we serve a picky God. We serve a picky God. You, uh, God doesn't just accept anything. There are acceptable things that God likes, and there are unacceptable things that God likes. Are you hearing me today? We serve a picky God. Like, in the Old Testament, God didn't just accept any type of sacrifice. You couldn't just throw anything at God. I remember reading in Leviticus uh, chapter 19, he said, for you to be accepted, it must be a male, get this, without defect. You couldn't just sacrifice anything to God. You can't just throw anything to God. There's acceptable things. There's unacceptable things. And you know, uh, God doesn't just accept any uh, type of financial offering either. He doesn't just say, you, God is not a wishing well where you could just throw coins at him. The book of Proverbs uh, says that we are to honor the Lord with your wealth. And with the best, get this, the best part of everything you produce. Did you catch that? The best part. 
He doesn't just accept anything uh, you throw, uh, throw at him. Uh, uh, you, you shouldn't give your waiter more than you give God. Some people, they, 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 they tip God and give their tithes and offerings to the waiter. Mm, I knew I wasn't going to get a lot of amens after that. Did you know that God doesn't just accept any type of prayer either? Did you know that God doesn't just accept any type of prayer? Uh, the book of Proverbs uh, says that if anyone turns a deaf ear to my instructions, even their prayers are detestable. You can't just live any way you want to live and expect God to hear you. You can't just, you can't just uh, uh, have any type of relationship you want to have and expect God to hear you. You can't just talk any way you want to talk and expect God to hear you. You'll be surprised at how many people's prayers are stuck in a corner somewhere, been built up for years. God ain't even listening. He doesn't accept just anything. God is a picky God. He's a picky God. He's a peculiar God. And the same is with our praise. God doesn't just accept any type of praise. And thus, we're going to be studying this afternoon from the subject, picky praise. Because God is a picky God, and he doesn't accept any type of praise. In fact, I'm shocked, really, because when I read the Bible, um, you see God going hard in the paint after, after, after praise. You see him going hard uh, in, the, in the paint after uh, unauthentic praise, and he goes really, really tough. In fact, in, in Almost, the prophet Almost, chapter 5, listen to what he says. He says, I will not accept your burnt offerings and grain uh, offerings, I won't even notice all your choice peace offerings. Away with your noisy hymns of praise. I will not listen to the music of your harps. Wow. Someone say, ouch. That's hard, God. That's tough. That's some tough love right there. He says, I will not listen to the music of your, of your harps because he doesn't just accept any type of praise. Doesn't just accept any type of praise. You'd be surprised at how many churches have their praise stuck in the corner of the sanctuary and they've been built up for years because they're just throwing anything out. I want your praise to count. I want your praise to be heard. Especially our type of praise. You come into our type of praise, you're going to get a workout and praise at the same time. Can anybody attest to that? Like, they, they, they'll have you thinking, our type of praise have you think if you put on deodorant in the morning. Because you be working out, working out, be jumping, and I praise God. That's the type of praise we have. But, man, I want our praise to count. Anybody want your praise to count? If we're going to work out together, we need to make it count. God is a picky God, and we're going to learn about picky praise. It's a peculiar type of praise that God receives and responds to. And the enemy doesn't want you to give the real thing because he knows there's power in our praise. The enemy doesn't want us to give the real thing because he knows, he knows that there's deliverance in praise. There's healing in praise. There's, there, there's, there's deliverance in praise. I remember the apostle uh, Paul and, and, and Silas were in prison and they were beat up. And at the 12 in the, in the morning, they decided, let's praise God. And they sang some hymns. And, and the Bible says that the earth shook. The, their praise shook the ground, shook the foundation of the earth. And that's why the enemy doesn't want us to give authentic praise. People can get delivered in their praise. They can get delivered. That's why, that's why you, never, you never skip praise and you never skip worship. Don't ever skip worship. Don't skip worship because your deliverance can be in that worship. Your freedom can be in that worship. Life is in that worship. And please, please do not skip worship just to come hear me speak. I'm not God. Don't get me blown up by God like that. Don't get me in trouble. I'm not going to be held accountable on the last day. Say, all oh, these people skip my, praising me just to hear you speak. No, don't get me like that. Get me like that. No way. Be on time for praise. Be involved in praise. So 
what is the type of praise that God receives? Well, Psalms 111 verse 1 informs us to the type of praise that God hears and receives. And I'm going to read this one verse over, and we're going to dissect it today in our study. Are you ready for the Word of God? Listen to what verse 1 says. It says, Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. This verse informs us as to our praise, the, the type of praise that is acceptable to God in this one verse. And so we're going to dissect this verse, and we're going to learn something, and you're going to walk away with the answer. What type of praise does God receive? You're going to walk away with that answer, and you're going you're gonna to be without excuse, right? You're going to be without excuse. I'm about to teach you uh, the word of God. Someone shout amen. amen. So number one, someone say number one. Acceptable praise is relational. Relational. I want you to notice in verse 1, because we're always going to go back to verse 1, it starts off by saying, praise the Lord. Someone say Lord. Someone say Lord. I want you to notice in your Bible that that word Lord is in all capital letters. Whenever you see the word Lord in all capital letters, it is what we transliterate Jehovah in English. Are you following along? Now, God has various names, and eventually we'll do a study on all the names of God, but you need to understand that the names of God highlight a certain aspect of God's character. Are you following along? Because God is multifaceted. There's not one name that contains all that God is. So he has, a, he, has, he has many hats that he goes by. But each name expresses or highlights a particular facet of his character. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? So when you read the word Lord in all capital letters, L-O-R-D, Jehovah, or Yahweh, it is the most famous name for God in the Old Testament, and it's his covenant name. It's his name that he uses to express the, the part of him that wants a relationship with you. It's the relational side of God. It's, it's, it's the side of God that relates to us personally. I want to remind you that we serve a personal God. Yes, he is king. Don't ever forget that he is king. Yes, he is sovereign. Don't ever forget that he is sovereign. Yes, he is the, he is the, he is the chief general of the armies of heaven. Don't ever forget that. But there's also a side to God that just wants to hang out with you. There's also a side to God that wants to eat with you. There's a side to God that wants to drive to work with you. There's a side to God that wants to drive to school with you. There's a side to God that wants to sleep with you. There's a side to God that just wants to talk to you. And it's expressed in that name, uh, Jehovah or Lord. It's the relational side to God. Are you following along? So our praise should be an overflow from our abiding relationship with God. We should praise him from this heated, passionate relationship that we have from him, with him. Now you might think, what does that look like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? What does that look like on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, we turn to Jesus' life as a model for us. Because Jesus modeled with the Father what an abiding relationship looks like. We turn to Jesus' life. And Jesus modeled an abiding relationship with the Father so that we could look at how he did it and we do it with him. Are you following along? Jesus had an abiding relationship with the Father. He lived by his Father's life. And you can tell by his words. In John chapter 12, verse 20, Jesus said, I say whatever the Father tells me to say. I don't repeat the news. I don't repeat the newspaper. I don't repeat the latest rumor that's going through the church. No, whatever comes out of my mouth comes from the Father. This is a model 
for what it means to have an abiding relationship with him. And Jesus repeatedly said that it was not him, but the Father who worked in him. Jesus repeatedly said it was not him, but the Father who worked in him. Jesus had this abiding relationship in John chapter 5, verse 10. Listen to Jesus. In John 5, 10, he says, I tell you the truth. The Son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son also does. That's a picture of an abiding relationship. Jesus repeatedly said, it was not him, but the Father who gave the teachings. Jesus repeatedly said, it was not him, but the Father who made the decisions. And Jesus boldly declared that he could do nothing without his Father. In John chapter 5, verse 10, he said, the Son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son also does. Look at He lived by the life of the Father. He modeled what an abiding relationship uh, looks like. And as Jesus lived by the Father's life, we are to live by Jesus' life. Did you pick that up? As Jesus lived by the Father's life, we are to live by the Son's life. What he did with the Father, we are to do with him. Are we allowing Jesus to run our life? Are we allowing Jesus to live in us and walk in us and have his being? That's what an abiding relationship looks like. Now, I shared with the church last week on Thursday night midweek worship that I've been serving the Lord by His grace for almost 30 years now. Almost 30 years. I was about 17 years old, 18 years old when I first surrendered to the Lord. In about a month or two, I'm going to turn 47 years old. And I'm here to declare that I am in love with Jesus more today than I've ever been in my life. And I'm here to declare that in the last 30 some years, Jesus has never done me wrong. He has never harmed me. He has never broke my heart. He has never backstabbed me. He has never let me down. All he done is good. All he's done is healing. He has strengthened me. He has helped me. He has lifted me up when I fell to the ground. And I love him today more than I ever loved him before. And I'm excited how Jesus is going to fill this church with his power. To impact this world with the fresh hope of the gospel. Listen, and I want that type of love for you to have with Jesus. I want you to experience that type of love. I want everybody who comes to Chapel of Change to serve the Lord out of love that they have for God. Not out of obligation, but out of love. Because they're grateful to the Lord for all that he's done for them. I want you to experience that type of love. But it comes through this abiding relationship with him. Number two, acceptable praise is volitional. Someone say volitional. I want to call your attention back to verse one. It says, I will praise the Lord. If you have your Bible, circle that two words, I will. I will. I will. I want you to notice that because volitional means... The act of the will. The act of the will. Notice he says, I will praise the Lord. So praise does not inv just involve the heart, but it also involves the act of the will. When you talk about volitional pra praise, it's voluntary praise. Volitional praise is voluntary praise. Volitional praise is praise that is not forced. It's praise that is not forced. God loves to look over heaven and catch his children praising him voluntarily. If all you do is praise the Lord when you come to church on some Sunday, something is wrong. 
Volitional praise is acceptable to God because it's an act of our will. We're not being forced to do it. We don't got a gun to our head to do it. No, we praise him as an act of our will. I'm going to give you some marriage insight or if you're engaged or maybe you want to get married one day, I'm going to give you a, a nugget, all right? My, my wife and I uh, celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary a couple weeks ago to the glory of God and 25 years uh, to the glory of God. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a nugget, okay? Like, like, like how do you know if someone has an abiding relationship with the Lord. Like, how do you know if someone has an authentic relationship with the Lord, right? I'm gonna give you, some of y'all, you, you're not married, but you hope to be married, right? So you gotta pay attention because I'm gonna give you a test that you could run without them even knowing it, right? And how, how many you need a test? You put it in your pocket, you'll use it in a couple years, all right? But, but how do you know that your spouse has an abiding relationship with the Lord, one sign, one sign is that you catch them every now and then singing unto the Lord uh, at, at odd times of the day. One sign, one sign that your spouse has an abiding relationship with the Lord is that you catch them, you stumble upon them singing unto the Lord voluntarily at odd times of the day. Now I'm putting your husbands up on game because you're going to have to start singing now. That voluntary, that volitional praise. Like, like sometimes, sometimes my wife, she catches me. I, I don't even speak in Spanish, but sometimes my wife catches me singing to the Lord in Spanish. I'd be like, un día la vez, Dios mío, esto puedo a ti. Dame la fuerza para vivir. Un día la vez. And that's all I know. That's all I know. You can't, you can't sign me up for the worship team. I'm not going to be in the choir. That's all I know. But it comes out every now and then. Voluntarily. You ain't got to put a gun to my head. You ain't got to threaten me with divorce. You ain't got to threaten me with no. It just comes out because I have an abiding relationship with the Lord. Does this make sense to anybody? See, volitional praise is a decision. It's, it's a determination. It, it requires a level of grit. Volitional praise is a determination. It, it requires a, a level of grit. It's a decision. That's why King David declared in Psalms 34 verse 1, listen to what he said. He said, I will bless the Lord. Notice that. I will bless. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise, get this, get this word, shall. Someone say shall. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Notice that phrase, I will. He says, his praise shall. Now, I know, I know, I know none of y'all been to prison, right? And don't look like you've been to prison, right? Uh, but, but there are some people that, 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 that have been to prison, you've probably been in the legal library because you're fighting for your freedom, right? And if you ever read any legal documents and you see that word shall on it, there's a force to that word shall. It's like you're not going to suggest it. You're not thinking about it. No, shall means it's going to happen. David, when he said this, sang this song, he was in the face of his enemy, and no doubt he didn't feel like worshiping the Lord. No doubt he felt fearful, but he said, I shall uh, bless the Lord. I will uh, bless the Lord. He made a decision. He made a decision to worship the Lord despite his present conditions. And I understand it. At times we don't worship the Lord the way he deserves because we don't feel like it. Sometimes we don't worship the Lord the way he deserves because we don't feel like it. We, we come to church after a, a hard week at work and maybe we're trying to figure out how to pay bills or maybe we got in the middle of a disagreement with our spouse on the way to church. Hello, somebody. Don't look to the left or the right. But it's in those times we need to exercise our will to praise God. It is in those times that we will to praise God no matter what. 
It is in those times that we will to worship God no matter what. It is in those times that we will to serve God no matter what. We will to rejoice in God no matter what the pain is taking. Listen, don't let yourself tell you what to do. Sometimes you got to preach to yourself. Sometimes you got to corner yourself. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself. Just don't talk back. I will bless the Lord. That's why David said in Psalms 118, uh, 24, this is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. That's the act of the will. That's saying, God, no matter what, I'm going to praise you. No matter what, I'm going to worship you. No matter what, I'm going to lift up your name. That is the praise he hears. That no matter what type of praise. Someone shout amen. Number three, acceptable praise is spiritual. Notice he says, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. Did you see that? Circle that in your Bible. When he speaks of the whole heart, he's describing the spiritual aspect of worship. Worship is not just emotional. Worship is not about how high you can jump. Worship is not just about how, how much you can swing from the chandeliers. No, worship is not just emotional, but it's spiritual. This is a spiritual exercise. This is a spiritual uh, sacrifice that we're giving uh, unto the Lord. Worship is spiritual. Listen, when it talks about the spiritual side of worship, it means that God wants your heart in worship. He wants your heart. He wants your heart. Listen, if you just come to sing but don't give your heart, don't come. If you just come to serve but not give your heart, don't come. If you come to just give but don't give your heart, don't give. God doesn't receive anything if it doesn't have the heart involved and there's power when our heart touches the heart of God that's where the power is released that's why he wants your heart when you come to the altar give your heart to to worship when you stand there give your heart to worship when you lift up your hands give your heart to worship give your heart that's what he says when it's a spiritual exercise I want your heart Jesus is the one who said in John chapter 4, he said, God is spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's heart right there. Bring your heart. Bring your heart to church. Every time you come to church, you got to bring your heart. I don't care if it's broken. I don't care if it's busted. I don't care if somebody dropped your heart. Bring your heart to God. Bring your heart to the altar of God and lift it up to him. That's where the miracles are. When you lift up your heart to God and worship and praise, that's what he wants. That's what he wants. So, so. Worship is acceptable. Worship is spiritual. Here's the last one as I wind our study down. Acceptable praise is congregational. Congregational. Notice, go back to verse 1 because we're always going to go back to the book. We are people of the book. Notice what he says in verse 1. He says, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the corner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of y'all are up. You're still up. Oh, that's good. That's good. Where is he bringing his praise to? Congregation. The congregation. Notice what he said. He said, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Listen, acceptable praise is congregational. God loves congregational worship. He loves congregational worship. The Bible calls us to join with other believers for worship. The Bible calls us to join with your family of faith for worship. The Bible calls us to congregational worship. Listen, can I talk like can we talk like family for a minute? When I encourage you to come to Sunday or I encourage you to come to Thursday, I'm not just saying that because I made it up. I didn't make that up. 
I didn't make that up. It's not, I'm not just telling you that because it's a great idea. No, I'm telling you that because it's in the book. It's in the book. I didn't make this up. I just submit to it. I gave my life to the Lord like you gave your life to the Lord. And the moment I entered into the kingdom of God and I surrendered my life to the Lord, guess what Jesus does? He gives me the book. It's called the Bible. And I don't rewrite the book because I may not like different aspects of it. I don't rewrite the book. I don't, I, don't, I don't look at marriage and try to rewrite the book on what it says about marriage. No, I'm the one who su submitted to this. I don't rewrite the book uh, as to what it pertains about how I'm to live and what, how am I to work. No, I submit to the book. I'm a, I'm a man of the book. We are a people of the book. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? So many people trying to rewrite the book. There's a lot of... There's a lot of things going on in our society that has the name of Christian on it, that they're, but they're trying to rewrite the book. Not everything that has Christian on it goes according to the book. You got to tell them, is it in the book? Show me in the book. If it's not chapter and verse, it's chatter or worse. I'm sorry. We go by the book. And... The call for worship in congregation runs throughout the whole Bible. It just runs throughout the whole Bible. In Psalms 95, verse 6 through 7, it says, Oh, come, get this, let us, I'm going to say us. It says, let us worship and bow down. Let us, somebody say us. Let us kneel before the Lord our God. What does that speak of? That speaks of congregational worship. This call runs throughout the whole Bible. When you look at the birth of the church, when the church was birthed 2,000 years ago, what were they doing? Listen, in Acts chapter 2, verse 46, it says, every day they continue to meet together. Look at that word. They continued to meet together in the temple courts. What do you think they did in the temple courts? They praised the Lord. They worship the Lord. Notice something, okay? Notice what the early church did. It says every day. Some of y'all get mad if I try to get you to come to the house of the Lord every day. I'm not trying to get you to come to the Lord's house of the Lord every day. I'm trying to get you to come on Sundays and Thursdays. But look what the early church did. They said every day. Every day. And then when we get to heaven... You know what we're going to be doing in heaven? You ain't going to have a mansion on the corner of heaven all by yourself. You ain't going to be able to isolate yourself in heaven. No. Revelation 7, 9 teaches that all nations are going to be gathered around the throne of God. And we all going to be praising and worshiping the Lord together. Someone shout together together and it doesn't matter if you sing it doesn't matter if you know how to sing or if you don't know how to sing you're gonna be singing so you might as well start practicing right now might as well start practicing right now we are called to worship in congregation we are called to worship together and even your own spirit attests to this you remember in the beginning of the pandemic when the church was shut down and we were supposed to be worshiping in our living rooms. And remember, remember that? Remember those days? And we were supposed to be worshiping in our living room and, and uh, we were supposed to be. And you know, some of us said we were, but we really weren't. <laughs> right? And do you remember that even though we we're worshiping in our living room, there was still a feeling inside of us, some of us, that said, there's got to be more to this. Anybody had that feeling? Like, this, there's something missing. Anybody had that feeling? Like, we had people still driving up to church, and they wondering why. Why am I still driving up there? There ain't no church. They driving up. I'll tell you why. Because your spirit is attesting to what the Holy Spirit is working in your life. 
Now, now I understand, don't get me wrong, I understand if you can't come out, and for those watching online, some people are sick. If you're sick, stay home, worship with us online. I understand there's, there's particular conditions. But by and large, listen, the pandemic may never go away. You better get to the house of the Lord and begin to worship, worship together with the family of God. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Even our spirit attests to that. At Chapel of Change, part of our vision is to build an army of 1,000 worshipers on the weekend. That's part of our vision, to build an army of 1,000 worshipers on the weekend. We have four campuses, Whittier on Saturday night, Carson Sunday, Long Beach Sunday, Paramount Sunday. And before the pandemic, we were almost there at about 1,000. We would hit over 1,000, we would come back down, we would hit 1,000 and come back down. We were, we, were, we were like right almost there. Today, we have approximately 550 people worshiping the Lord on the weekend at Chapel Church, which is a miracle in itself, which we are totally... Uh-oh, and we're praising the Lord for, but that's not where we want to stay. We are reaching a thousand worshipers on a Sunday or weekend, and we're calling it Vision 1000. Someone say Vision 1000. Vision 1000, and we are going to have a renewed commitment to reach our family and our friends, and we're going to prioritize inviting people and, and bringing people to the Lord. It's called Vision 1000. Say it so that the slide person can see Vision 1000. Say Vision 1000 again. One more time. And so I want to encourage you to prioritize gathering together with us for worship. I want to encourage you to prioritize gathering with us for serving the Lord in the community or discipleship groups or Thursday night. I want to encourage you to invite people to church. I want to encourage you to bring people to church. I really see that this 1230 service could have over 200 people worshiping the Lord here at 1230. Kids learning the Bible. Teenagers, more teen. We need to double the amount of teenagers uh, that were teaching the Lord, uh, teaching about the Lord. We there are souls. One of the things that God has said in my heart in the last three months, there are still souls to be saved and disciples to be made. And God is calling us to partner with him to reach a new harvest of souls uh, for uh, the kingdom of God. And we want you to participate in it. We want you to partner with us. Listen, I want to remind y'all because, see, some of y'all are spoiled. And maybe, maybe you have not got out, right? And I'm not encouraging you to get out, but um, I have visited many churches across the nation. And I just want to remind you that God is doing something special at Chapel of Change. He is doing something special at Chapel of Change. The water is hot. At Chapel of Change. Now I know some of y'all been here a while, and the longer you're in the hot water, the less you feel the hot water. You remember that? Anybody got a jacuzzi? It starts off as hot. You're like, oh, how am I gonna get it? But after 20 minutes, you're laying down in it. But I want to remind you, I've been to dozens and dozens of other churches, and praise God for what He's doing around the world. But God is doing something special at Chapel of Change, and you have a church that you could be confident to invite somebody and be confident that the Holy Spirit will grip their heart. You have that type of church that you could be radical in bringing somebody and inviting somebody to church. Listen, our church, new people came in the last three months, and the pastors weren't even here. That's a sign that the Holy Ghost is here. Don't get too excited over that. I'm here to stay now. But that's a sign that the Holy Ghost is here. I, seen a, uh, the, I was talking to a sister yesterday at the picnic, and it was her first time uh, fellowshipping with us. And she just happened to come on the day of the picnic, and her heart was filled uh, with, the, with, with the touch of the Lord at what she saw, the different nationalities and different cultures and different people of different backgrounds. She's seen our deaf community, man. She looked at our deaf community that was right by her, and her heart was touched at the amount of deaf family that we have part of Chapel Chase. God is doing something special here. 
And so we're going to have a renewed commitment to invite and bring people into the house of the Lord so that they can be saved, they could be healed, and delivered. Is there anybody in agreement with that? Shout amen. amen. Shout amen, somebody. Let's bow our heads in the presence of the Lord. With every head bowed and every eye closed, just right now for a couple moments, every head bowed and every eye closed, this is an important part of our time together where we reflect upon the word of the Lord. And while everybody remains seated in the atmosphere of reverence, I want us to bow our heads and meditate and reflect upon what is it that God was telling you what was it that God was saying to you today? Let's reflect upon the word of the Lord. every head bowed and every eye closed. Acceptable praise begins from a right relationship with God. It's relational. Maybe you're here today and your relationship with God somehow, some way, has been broken. Maybe you're here today and you do not have a relationship with the Lord. Maybe you're far from God. Today, God is calling you home. Today, God is calling you back to the congregation of those who worship the name above all names. Today, God is calling you back to your family of faith. Maybe you have a broken relationship with the Lord and you want to get right. Maybe you want a new season. Maybe there's someone here who's ready to commit to being faithful, to obeying God, not rewriting the book, but being a person of the book. If you fall in any one of those categories, if you feel that the Lord is calling you to fix His relationship with you, I want you to think about if that's you, because in a moment I'm going to I'm going to call you forward to receive prayer. I'm going to pray for you. Think about it. Is that you? Is the Lord steering up that inside of you to surrender to Jesus, to get right with God? Everyone else, everyone just stay in the atmosphere of prayer, atmosphere of worship, meditation. This is an important part of our time. You probably won't get too many gifts of meditation If you're here today and you fall in any one of them categories, I want to pray with you at the altar. And right now, I'm, in, I'm inviting you to the altar of God. Just come walk down right here, and I'll wait a couple moments in case there's anybody need to get their relationship right with God. Their relationship right with God. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. If you need to get your relationship right with God, I want to pray over you. Come to the altar of the Lord. Everyone else stay in an atmosphere of prayer, meditation. We'll wait a couple moments. Anyone else?
Everybody just stay in an atmosphere of prayer, worship, and meditation. My brother, look at me. Hear the word of the Lord for you. There's nothing you can do to cause God to forgive you more. Nothing. He's already forgiven you. 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sins to God, He's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. There's nothing you can do to cause God to forgive you anymore there's nothing you can do to cause God to love you anymore. Yes, you messed up, but you're never going to earn His mercy because mercy is for the guilty. Mercy is for the guilty, and His mercy is sufficient for you. No need to toil no more for God's favor. You got it. No need to toil for God's grace. You got it. No need to toil for God's mercy. You got it. Now, here is your assignment. You grow in that mercy. You grow in that grace. You grow in that. You live from that. You don't live to achieve it. You live from it. Everything you do, you do from that place. You're already there. You're already there. Lift up your hand unto the Lord. That's a word for you. As you walk away today, more so. You're not going to earn God's grace. You're not going to earn God's mercy. You're going to walk from it. You're going to walk, live from that grace. You're going to be a whole powerful individual. Father, I thank you for our brother in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for his transparency, his humility, that he's come to the altar of God. I thank you, Lord God, that there's nothing he can do for you to love him more. There's nothing he can do for you to forgive him more, that, he, that you love him more than anything, and that his sins are underneath the blood of Jesus, and that he is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and that he is an heir. He is an heir. And more than that, he's more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus who loves him. And now, Lord God, as he walks away from this altar... Help him, Lord God, to live from his new identity of being in Christ. Help him to operate from his new identity of being in God. Strengthen, my brother. Use him in a mighty way as you already are. Provide for him, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone says, amen, amen. amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Come on, somebody, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Did you learn something today? Anybody get something from the Lord today? Praise the Lord. We're going to prepare to give unto the Lord, and I want to call up Pastor Martin to lead us. Give it up for Pastor Martin. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. God is so good as we transition to worshiping God in our giving. I have a scripture for you this afternoon. And this is found in Deuteronomy 16, verse 17. It says, Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given you. What does this scripture tell me? That God has already provided and continues to provide for me and my family. So I am going to worship God and set aside the portion that belongs to Him. To worship Him. To honor Him. And give Him the glory that is due to Him. As the ushers make their way forward this afternoon, I want to remind us that we have a debit machine available in the lobby. If you choose to give that way. We have envelopes behind your seats that you're able to give that way as well. Most of our church family gives to chapelofchange.org online if you choose to do that as well. Or you can text to the number 
that's on your screen. I have an announcement on the 20th of this month and the 21st. We have child dedication. So if you want to dedicate your children to the Lord, and let me tell you this, your kids will always be your kids. doesn't matter how old they are. Amen? So if you got one of them rebellious childs, get them dedicated to the Lord. doesn't matter how old he is. Bring them to the altar and surrender them to God. Amen? I also have an announcement for the Kingsmen's. This is our last day to be able to order a Kingsmen shirt. So the cost is $25. How many Kingsmen we got in the house? All right. Somebody take account of that because we're going to buy shirts. And so the shirt is $25. Please see Nilo in the back. He's the representative for the Kingsmen. He'll sign you up. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise because of who you are and that you give us the ability, Lord God, to worship you in our giving. Ushers, you are released. God bless you. Thank you for your giving. So it's our tradition to close out with a blessing. How many need a blessing from the Lord? Yeah. Amen. I also want to remind you about Thursday night, midweek. Come back this Thursday, 715. Worship starts. We have youth ministry that night too, as well as children's ministry. So you're invited. I want to invite our pastors up to the altar. If you need personal prayer after I dismiss with a blessing, you can feel free to come up here and one of our pastors will pray for you. Uh, I want to invite you to lift up your hands unto the Lord as we dismiss with a blessing. In the name of the Father who loves you with an endless love, in the name of the Son who died that you could live, and in the name of the Holy Spirit who helps you, protects you, and bless you, may you go this week with the protection and the blessing of the Lord. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Hope to see you Thursday night. Go in peace. <laughs>